And then the final things here, the final rhythmic components, are what I call the uh, thrash crashes. Now this is uh, this is a kind of replacement idea really for ride cymbals. You know, I quite often find with rides that um, the function, what you're actually looking for them to supply you with, um, is that kind of almost white noise shimmer, that real top end shimmer, and. This way of processing crashes kind of gives gives you that. So I've got the same, I've got an instance of the same crash symbol here. We listen to it isolated. It's higher pitch than the uh, the mega crash that we had earlier, um, and it's replicated across both channels. And what's effectively going to happen once this breakout happens, the final time round um, at bar ninety seven. What I'm looking for is for a just lots of top end energy because this is this is the point where you you know you're kind of tipping people slightly over the edge. So um, if you listen to the track as a whole, you can hear how these crash symbols are just slightly overlapping on each other, um, and they're effectively they're landing on each beat of the bar. So it's rather like a it's rather like a, a drummer who would quite organically do this anyway towards the end of the set where you know each drum each kick drum and each um snare drum hit they'd be equally they'd be you know smashing a, a crash cymbal just to give it that extra emphasis so this is how it kind of sounds at the point of breakout just here with the with and without there just how much the addition of those crashes just kind of binds together that final play out all of those disparate elements it's sort of in a way it's a, another kind of slightly smudging tool and that it just gives you uh, that kind of crackle of um, high-end energy so with these crashes um, one of the other techniques I mean to actually uh, derive these crashes it, you know on the face of it it looks as if looks as if uh, these have actually just been the turned down versions of the um, of the main crash so let's just listen to the main crash now you'll notice that it's got a, a pretty um, severe kind of attack to it as you'd imagine a crash would have if you smacked it with a stick um, for the for the remainder of this phrase and really what I'm looking for these um, these crashes to provide the track with is that fizzy top end so a little technique that I use quite often with crashes to create this effect is just to isolate some of the tail end of the crash like this and that obviously has much less of a of an attack to it um, and effectively the way that these crashes have been derived is just simply to grab that part of the tail just copy and paste um, it's a really nice way of just creating that effect. So if we listen to um, just the two crashes together here. You'll also notice that they're just very slightly panned. You know, this um, this one's nine to the left and this one's um, eight to the right. So they're, and they're fairly central, but there's enough width in them to um, just swirl around in the mix a little bit. And... Um, it just seems to again just just give that top end the brightness that we need and the fizz that we need um and it, you know it's it's a it's a nice alternative as well it's quite an organic alternative i think to just using a piece of white noise and that's pretty much it for the rhythms